Welcome to part one of the CCREF, or Composting Council Research and Education Foundation's Compost Sampling Guidance video series. The CCREF, along with the USDA, has developed methods through the development of the test method for the examination of composting and compost, or TMEC, publications. This video will provide proper compost sampling methods that follow the TMEC 02.01 guidance. This video series will focus specifically on sampling finished compost, compost that has been cured and screened and is ready for marketing to end users. This is what is referred to as end process sampling in the TMEC sampling methodology, which is different than sampling for feedstock analysis or mid-compost sampling for process analysis. The following sampling procedure can be used for compost analysis of all the analytical parameters in the U.S. Composting Council's Seal of Testing Assurance, or SDA program, but is also applicable when sampling only for individual groups of parameters included in the SDA program, such as plant nutrients or compost maturity. Please watch this entire video before developing and initiating your sampling plan. Remember that your compost analytical plan and sample results are a powerful marketing tool for your compost. A little extra effort here, pay dividends down the road. The following items will be covered over the course of this video. Frequency of sampling determination, sampling equipment, chain of custody and paperwork, collecting and compositing the sample, laboratory supervisor input, a companion video in this video series will cover sampling for parameters that require additional attention and will cover guidance on sampling collection for compost with a greater degree of variation and for problem solving of compost process issues. Additional sampling guidance is available from the CCREF. The first step in the sample planning process is to determine the frequency of monitoring that will be adequate for your composting operation. This is the number of finished compost samples that your operation should have sampled and analyzed each year. The number of samples required per year is typically based on the amount of compost produced at a facility. The TMEC method 02.01 does not provide specific guidance for the frequency of monitoring, and it is important that all compost operators check their local and state composting operation permits to determine if a certain frequency of monitoring is required for their operation. The frequency of monitoring required for the U.S. Composting Council Seal of Testing Assurance, or STA, is based on the amount of compost produced at each participating facility, with larger facilities requiring more frequent analysis. For composting operations using biosolids as a feedstock, the required frequency of monitoring is also determined by the amount of compost produced. After determining your sampling dates based on your chosen frequency of monitoring, it is necessary to gather your sampling equipment, including the following. Paperwork and record keeping. Chain of custody. Permanent marker ballpoint pen, logbook, sanitizing and cleanliness, 4x6 or larger plastic tarp, spray bottle filled with dilute solution of Alkanox or similar non-phosphorus cleaner for sanitation, nitrile gloves, tools and containers, shovel, plastic hand trowel, 5-gallon bucket, 1-gallon Ziploc bags, shipping materials, shipping label, cooler for shipping, blue ice or frozen ice packs, packing material, adhesive tape. It is important that all equipment that will come into contact with the compost during sampling is cleaned and sanitized prior to sampling. As we discussed, this video provides guidance for sampling finished compost. For the purposes of this guidance, we are assuming that the finished compost has gone through curing and that with the mixing that has occurred during the composting, curing, and screening process, as well as all of the mixing occurring during transport between the processes, the final compost is relatively homogeneous. In part two of this video series, we will address sampling from compost piles with a higher degree of variability. All of that being said, even in our current scenario, it is critical that the sample is representative of the entire finished batch of compost from which the sample is collected. The sampling location should reflect the material most representative of the compost going out for sale. 
For operations at which compost is screened prior to sales, samples should be collected from recently screened piles. For composts that are arranged in windrows from start to finish, samples should be collected from windrows that are ready for shipping to markets. TMEC Method 02.01 recommends that compost samples are composited from a minimum of 15 subsamples taken from locations throughout the finished compost stockpile. The subsamples should be collected from random locations within the stockpile. All samples should be taken from various depths within the stockpile, ranging from 8 inches below the surface to deep within the stockpile. In order to avoid sampler bias, the locations from which the subsamples are collected should be randomized. This can be as simple as having the sampler randomly choose where to sample within the stockpile as they go, making an effort not to have knowledge of potential areas of variability within the stockpile impact their choice of sampling locations. The other extreme of randomization would be to create a grid on paper that is a scale representation of a stockpile and use a random numbers table to pick the areas within the grid to be sampled. The key takeaway here is that the subsampling and compositing process needs to result in a random and representative composite sample. The first step in the paperwork is to determine a sample name. Try to keep the name as simple as possible, but include enough information to provide context for other people that may be reviewing the analysis. For instance, for facilities that sample quarterly, Q3 2018, finished, would be appropriate. Fill out the chain of custody, label the containers in which the sample will be shipped, and fill out your logbook with the date, location of sampling, weather conditions, and any other notes that may be relevant to the quality of the compost. Starting with the first random location, Use your shovel to dig into the pile to the depth at which you want to collect the sample. For larger facilities and larger stockpiles, using a skid steer or front end loader to cut into the piles can be helpful during the collection of subsamples. Once the desired depth is reached, use the hand trowel to clear away compost which has been in contact with the shovel. This is important to prevent any possible trace metals contamination from contact with the shovel. Then collect approximately one quart of the compost from the desired depth. Place this subsample into the five gallon bucket. Do this at all 15 or more subsample locations. In order to make a representative composite sample, the subsamples must be thoroughly blended. If weather conditions are extreme, for example, high precipitation or high wind, choose an area under cover for making the composite sample. Empty the subsamples from the five gallon bucket onto the tarp and use the plastic hand trowel to thoroughly blend all of the subsamples together. From this point, final blending can be completed by one of several methods. The cone and quarter method is helpful for providing further randomization in the composite sampling process. For this method, randomly cut out one fourth of the blended material and further blend this portion. Repeat this step until you have the amount that will be shipped out for analysis. In our example, approximately one gallon. Alternatively, after blending on the tarp, the composite sample could be tumbled and tossed from one five-gallon bucket to a second bucket, breaking up clumps by hand wearing nitrile gloves. Place approximately three and a half quarts of the now thoroughly blended composite sample into the pre-labeled Ziploc bag. Remove excess air from the bag prior to zipping. Then place this bag inside a second Ziploc bag for additional sample protection. Immediately following, place a layer of gel ice packs at the bottom of the cooler. Then place the sample on top, followed by another layer of gel ice packs. Ship overnight to the lab that you have chosen to run the analysis. A refrigerator can be used to cool and store the sample prior to shipping, provided that the sample is not cooled to below freezing during storage. Here I have laid out the amounts of compost that labs use for several common compost analysis parameters. As you can see from the small amount of material used in each analysis, blending the sample thoroughly prior to shipping to the lab is important in reducing variability of the analysis. Always call the lab prior to sampling to determine how much sample is needed for the analysis. Some of the problems that labs encounter with samples that they receive from compost analysis include the following. 
temperature of sample received by the lab. It is important to ship the sample by overnight delivery and as close to freezing as possible without freezing the sample. Compost is inherently biologically active, which is a great thing, but it also requires more care in sample preservation and shipping to ensure that what the lab analyzes is similar to what is sampled at the compost facility. Biological zero is 4 degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Problems with samples not preserved and shipped at the proper temperature include Warm and wet samples going anaerobic in sealed containers. Moist and warm samples nitrifying during shipping. Results for samples that have been frozen and are analyzed for pathogens may not be acceptable for regulatory purposes. Ice packs. Use blue ice packs instead of water-based ice when possible. Even when the compost sample is properly packed, melted ice has the potential to get into the sample through a puncture in the bag or a loose lid. Sample size. The amount of sample desired for analyses varies from lab to lab. It is important to confirm with the lab with which you work how much sample they require prior to making and sending out your composite sample. Too much sample costs more for shipping and may be a little bit of a nuisance for the lab, but on the other hand, shipping too small of a sample is a bigger problem as it may necessitate duplicating sampling and shipping efforts. Chain of custody, COC. Labs mentioned that they sometimes receive COCs that are not completely filled out. For example, sometimes the dates and times of sampling and shipping are missing, which can cause a problem in determining whether or not the analyses meet the regulatory hold times. When shipping the same composite sample in more than one container, ensure that they are labeled on the containers as the same sample. For instance, August 2018 1 of 2 and August 2018 2 of 2 for an August 2018 composite sample that is shipped in two one-gallon Ziploc bags. Without this additional information, the lab may treat the samples as two separate samples. Shipping time and delivery. We want to stress that due to the biological activity inherent in compost, keeping samples cold during shipping is imperative. CCREF recommends always shipping compost samples via overnight delivery. One of the problems labs have identified with receiving compost samples is that they are warm and active by the time they are delivered. Ship samples on blue ice overnight and call the lab prior to shipping to confirm that someone will be at the lab to receive them when they arrive. Thank you for watching CCREF's video on sampling finished compost in accordance with TMEC method 02.01. Our goal was to provide you with simple sampling instructions that will help to minimize potential sampling and analytical errors in support of developing accurate information about the quality and value of your compost. Please contact CCREF for additional compost sampling information and to give feedback on this video. Please watch part two of this video series for additional information on sampling heterogeneous stockpiles and for sampling for parameters that require additional attention to detail.